Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin with insurgency in Jobe State. Barely five days after Boko Haram terrorists killed 10 persons in the Bia Palo in Gaidam, an improvised explosive device has exploded, killing one person and injuring seven others in another drinking joint in Gashua, the headquarters of Badri local government area of the state. Badri, this explosion was it about <laughs> this insurgent? They don't want people to uh, to drink and uh, mm -hmm. in Biapalo in Gedam and uh, another one in um, Gasho. Yes, uh, we are beginning to see a nasty and very dangerous trend. Before now, Boko Haram elements could not spread their tentacles to Taraba State. Even at the height of his powers, Boko Haram didn't have active cells in Taraba State and they were not known to carry out attacks in Taraba State. But ISWAP has claimed responsibility for the bomb attack that happened last week. So that should send um, dangerous um, <coughs> signals to the security agencies that as we are closing in on them in Bono State, in Adama State, and Yobe, they are planning to spread their tentacles beyond those three states. Now, to add to that, before now, Boko Haram operated in only two local governments of Yobe State. Only two local governments. And this body local government, the home local government of the Senate President, was not one of the local governments where Boko Haram ever launched an attack. Hmm. Now they've claimed, hmm. I mean, they've launched this attack, they've attacked um, um, drinking dens. That's to send a signal that they are trying to spread their tentacles. They probably now have cells in those places. And that, that portends serious danger. Does it mean now that when we go to the north and we feel uh, bored in our hotels, we can walk into a beer parlor mm. and have a drink or two? Because Taraba State, I mean, <laughs> it's not, if you told me that this could happen, I would have argued. But that's where they've gone now, to kill people in a, in a beer parlor. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this was clearly a terrorist attack. Because they didn't do it for the money. Mm -hmm. They just take people's lives. So we, 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 we've got to improve our capacity for surveillance. And we should realize that all is not, is not Uhuru yet. Mm. We still have battles ahead to fight against this undesirable element. Do you be at, um, I thought the, uh, the rates of attack of Boko Haram to, to, that we succeeded in recent month in de-escalating, well, you know, the uh, attacks? But even with that, I think nobody will be surprised that they are trying to spread their tentacles to areas where they think these are soft targets. Because like you said, this area is not known for attacks. It's very easy for somebody to move in and cause maximum damage. And that we are talking about it is a lo a lo it's proof that they succeeded in bringing this to the attention of Nigerians, that they are indeed still very potent. It does not take away the, from the success of the army they've recorded in Bonu, and parts of Yubi Adamawa. But it's just to open new theaters of conflict so that they'll give the impression they are still as potent as they were three, four, five years ago. So while we are dealing with um, Boko Haram, we are still dealing with uh, bandits in other parts of the world? Yes. Um, one can say with certainty that the days of this um, the days of terror of Boko Haram or Iswa, whatever they choose to call themselves, in the Northeast are numbered. They are the ones even killing one another now because during the weekend, the Shekau group and Iswap 
they they fought against one another inside Sambisa, and some commanders were killed, and a good number of the fighters on both sides died. So it's like what Yoruba uh, call onfura uh, So they are the ones killing one another now. They are struggling amongst themselves for preeminence, and they are killing one another. But we have dealt decisively with them. We have dealt terribly with them in that theater, that in the northeast uh, um, theater of war. And the evidence is there for all to see that their rate of attacks, either on communities or on the armed forces, we have gone down, rate of attack has gone down tremendously. You hardly even read about those things again because their capacity to launch those attacks has diminished. Yeah. You know, when Boko Haram resorted to using um, these uh, long range um, rockets mm. the other day, firing at civilian areas, mm. it mm. was in response to the, the loss of capacity to freely move around. In their gun trucks moving mm. around these days there are drones mm. the two candles are there the ground attack helicopters mm. the they are there. Mm. we still use the um, um what is it called the alpha jet the french the old war horse from france that mm. has been decommissioned in their country we are still using it we use it both as trainer uh, trainer uh, fighter jet as well as um Deploy for bombing, combat, yeah. bombing raids on this it's still, uh, it's people working. it's still working yes at least i saw them you know so in spite of that we are now seeing them trying to go to new places where you would not expect that they cooperate that is to tell you that look there are still dangers ahead and we, we have to respond to that Could in the right way okay. before they spread beyond the uh, even the north. They could even be thinking of coming down south. Hmm. All right. That's a possibility. Mm.